church and welcome to worship with us this morning. We are so glad that you are here, whether you're here in person or joining us online. I'm going to just apologize for their flickering sconces now. They are turned all the way up. It's We're just going to ignore them. Um, so, and it's a little, you know, fun and exciting. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I have several announcements for us, and as always, they are in the good news, so if you miss them here, check them Monday and Thursday, and also on our Facebook page. Um, our Women's Fellowship Food Collection is still happening. Next week will be our last March Sunday for canned meats, so if you want to bring in that canned tuna, chicken, spam, beef stew, all that sort of stuff, we'll be still collecting that next Sunday, and next Sunday I will let you know what April's will be. Um, and Women's Fellowship is still doing the Thinking of You campaign. Um, there are cards in the back if you want to grab those. And if we run out of those, I still have some more in my office. Speaking of Women's Fellowship, they will be meeting this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Um, and it will be a great time. Our Lenten worship series continues this evening at 6 p.m. at Chippewa. Um, Reverend Dr. Judy Chung will be our preacher. She is the Executive Director of Missionary Services for Global, Global Mysteries of the United Methodist Church. That's a mouthful. But she's in charge of all the mission, or helps in being in charge of all the missionaries throughout the world for the Methodist Church. So it should be a really wonderful sermon that she does for us. Um, and just a little heads up, April 3rd is our next Sunday of Communion, and as a reminder, during Lent, we will not be doing live streams on Communion Sundays, so we hope we'll see you in our pews on Sunday, April 3rd. Every Sunday, we would love to see you in our pews, but especially on April 3rd, when we will not be having a live stream. Um, April 9th, that following Saturday, is our Easter egg hunt. It's back. We're going to be in our circle with the new gazebo. Um, if you'd like to bring donations for um, the goodie bags, they can be put in the library by April 1st. And today is the last day to turn in your orders for Easter flowers. Um, order forms are in the back. They're $12, and you can do them in memory or in honor. Um, and if you'll just make sure your check is also with your order form, so that way it can all be taken care of. Um, you can also call the office tomorrow morning or stop in and drop it off to Sarah. I think those are all my notes, and now we'll turn to Kim for our call to worship. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Please join me. Oh God, my God, we seek you. Our, our souls thirst for you. Our spirits long for you. For we are parched and weary in these desert times, these wilderness places. But your love, O oh God, is better even than life. Our words will praise you, our actions bless you. Let us seek the Lord where God may be found. Call upon the Holy One who is near. We will bless you as long as we live. We lift up our hands and call on your name. Please join me in our opening prayer. Holy One, when we are alone in the desert, wandering through the wilderness, we call to you, for you are our God. Our souls cling to you. Come, God, and hold us up. Come, bring your presence and fill us with your peace. In the shadow of your wings, we will sing for joy. Amen. Please join us in our opening hymn, Be Thou My Vision, page 451 in our hymnal, verses 1 and 2.
5, verses 1 through 9. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money, without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Here ends our lesson. Now is our time for a children's moment. And even though we don't have anyone, I think I would really like Miss Chris to still come up and do it because it's going to be really neat. joining me, Pastor Megan. You're welcome. <laughs> um, well, as I was thinking about my children's moments, I was also planning my uh, teaching uh, lessons for the week. Um, so I teach math and I teach science, and uh, math is okay, but science is like my favorite subject to teach. So um, I was going to ask the children, what are some things uh, that are related to science? So Pastor Megan, what's science all about? <laughs> Science is about everything, all, how we're created and put together and the things we're sitting on. And, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah, science uh, can be about plants, it can be about animals. Uh, we talk about sound, we talk about light, uh, we talk about the stars, the sky, the planets. Uh, well, right now in science, I'm teaching my class about um, forces in motion. And we happen to be talking about this gentleman, Isaac Newton. So, and it is said that one day Isaac Newton was sitting under a tree. And we don't know if this really happened, but an apple happened to fall. And that's what gave him his idea for the law of gravity. And uh, in my class right now, we are talking about Isaac Newton's three laws of motion. And I'm actually going to talk about his third law of motion, which talks about uh, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So uh, if you had a basketball and you dropped a basketball, that would be the action. What would be the equal and opposite reaction? What would happen after you dropped the basketball? It, coming back up. it would come back up to you. Exactly. So if I would take a balloon and my action would be to blow air into the balloon, You know you want to see this. Yeah. <laughs> what would be that equal and opposite reaction? It going hopefully all over the place. Yeah, I would let the air out of the yeah. balloon, right? That do I have your permission to oh, do that? Of course. Okay, yeah. so we will let the air out of the balloon. I'll try to keep it. keep it away from the uh, candles. Okay. Yeah. So the equal and opposite <laughs> reaction would be the air coming out of the balloon. So that got me um, to think about Jesus. So we are in the season right now of. Lent. Lent, right? We're in the season of Lent. Now, Jesus shows his love for us every single day, right? Mm -hmm. But during Lent, there is a day that Jesus um, especially showed his love for us by going to the cross, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I want to think about some ways um, that uh, we can show our love back to Jesus because we can think of action and reaction. Jesus showed his love for us. That would be the action 
What can be our reaction to show our love to Jesus? What are some things that we can do? And I was thinking about myself. Um, for my children, I can show my love to Jesus by doing some kind things for them. Uh, every Sunday, my son will come over. I'll make dinner, we'll have dinner, but I always make a lot extra so he can take some home and he doesn't have to cook for himself for a couple nights. Uh, when my daughter comes home from school, from college, uh, I'll always follow her to the gas station, fill up her car for her, and buy some groceries and things for her to take back to school. So that's me showing um, my love to my children and showing my love to Jesus by doing things for them. So what are some ways that you can be that reaction and show your love to Jesus? By our food collection that we're doing right now. That's a great example. Everybody and I think the love that I have for this congregation and for Chip as well. Does anybody else want to share uh, an example of how you can be that reaction and show your love? The thinking of you cards. <clears throat> the thinking of you cards. Exactly, good. That's very good. What was that? The Easter egg hunt for the kids. Exactly, good. That's another great example. Our 40 days of prayer. Yes, very good. Another good example. Showing patience. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, showing patience. Very good. Good. Okay, thank you. Um, well, would everybody pray with me? Yeah. Thank you. Dear Jesus, thank you for showing your love for us each and every day. Please help us to show our love for you by doing kind things for everybody else. In your holy name we pray, amen. amen. Now, one more thing. Um, they happen to make this cookie called Fig Newtons. So, um, if, if anybody is interested, um, I do have some Fig Newtons packaged up. So, if you would like a Fig Newton at the end of the service, uh, you can take one of those and remember, Isaac Newton and the action reaction law. So you can remember Jesus was the action, so let's be the reaction and do something kind for somebody else. Wonderful. All right, well, thank you for sharing. Thank you, Chris. That was a wonderful job. Our gospel lesson today comes from the book of Luke, 13th chapter, verses 1 through 9. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you, we, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Shalom fell on them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here. For three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? And he replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Here ends our lesson. There's some giggling in the back because about the tree and Fig Newton and Fig Newtons and Isaac Newton, you know. It all goes together. It all does. It all does. Um, this past week, I had the privilege to go back to my seminary and preach at their community chapel again. Um, I had done that in the fall, and I've done it previously, and so I got to go again this week and share this message. Um, so this is the message that I shared with them that I will now share with you. So let us pray. God, quiet our minds and still our hearts. Help us to hear you amongst us. Help us to see the gardeners among us and help us to be the gardeners to those who need more time growing. 
And God, may the words from my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing and acceptable to you and to all who hear them this day. Amen. In my life, I have often felt like the man who had a fig tree planted in his vineyard from the end of our passage. The one who sees that there is no fruit coming from the fig tree and just wants to rip it out from the ground and start again. I felt that way when I moved home after college and was trying to figure out what I was supposed to be doing with my life. I felt that way when I figured out that ministry was my calling. I even felt that way when I started at seminary. And I know I have had time since leaving MTSO that I have felt that way. When you are in the thick of figuring things out, it can be so hard to see the fruit that you are bearing. It can seem easier to uproot yourself and try again somewhere new. But if I would have done that, I would not be here standing in front of you all preaching in a place that I never expected my tree to grow, in a place that is continuing to show me the fruit that I have started to bear. There is a lot that we could look at in our scripture for today. This passage from Luke is complex and can bring up a lot of different things for each of us. This passage starts with Luke telling us that some people were present that told Jesus about what Pilate had done, and then it ends with the parable of the fig tree. It seems that often when Jesus is asked about the faithfulness of someone or the reasoning behind why something is happening or why he performed a miracle on the Sabbath, he answers in his very Jesus way of asking the question back to those that questioned him. And if they still seem confused, he explains it further with a parable. Let's hear that parable again that Jesus tells them. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Often when I'm trying to understand Jesus' parables, I figure out where I fit in them. And as I've already mentioned, I have often found myself in the role of the man in the vineyard. The one that comes out and looks at his fig tree a lot and keeps getting disappointed that there is no fruit growing on it. I can hear myself saying, well, I've been trying this for a few years and it's clearly not working. Let's pack up our things and move on to the next. Well, this is clearly not what God was telling me to do, so I should just give up. Well, my plan is clearly not going as I planned time to go home. And just saying those things out loud, I can hear the gardeners in my life, the ones that have spoken truth into my life, into my plan, telling me to give it a little bit more time to keep learning, to keep asking questions, to keep talking to God, because the plan is not finished. The plan has just started. There is still fruit that is waiting to ripen. And if we are lucky, we have people in our lives that act as the gardener, that tell us, give it a year. Let me help fertilize what is already there. Give it a little bit more time. And if you do not see fruit starting to bear, I will help you cut your tree down. And if we are lucky, we wait a little bit more time and we see, start to see something change. Maybe that change is happening in us. Maybe that change is happening around us. Maybe our tree has taken us to a place that we never imagined our tree being. Maybe we have needed to prune our trees, remove parts of it that were not serving us, and let that new growth start something fresh. We are in the midst of Lent a time when we reflect on the journey that Jesus took to the cross, 
And it's a time that we can reflect on our faith journeys as well. And as I've admitted to you all this season, Lent is my favorite season in the church. And it's when I often feel closest to God more than I do other times of the year. And since this past Ash Wednesday, I have been reflecting on how I've been pruning my tree and finding the fruit that I did not know was there. The fruit that needed more time to mature, to be fertilized in all of the experiences I have had since that Ash Wednesday when I first heard God speak to me. And as I've shared these last few weeks, I got my call, or rather I finally heard God speaking to me on that Ash Wednesday in 2014. In these past weeks of Lent, I have been reflecting on how much has changed in my life since that day, and how much has finally made sense. What I didn't know was that God was starting to fertilize and help to prune me. Eventually, I made it to seminary, to the place that helped me to grow and prune myself even more. The fruit was just starting to grow. And yet, I still did not see myself producing anything worthwhile. But those around me kept saying, Just wait, Megan. It's coming. Megan, look how far you have come in your time here. Look at all that you have learned about yourself. Megan, you are bearing fruit. Just look at those around you. Sometimes we don't always see the fruit as it's being created. Sometimes we need to take a step back and look at what is around us. Sometimes it takes two years of a pandemic to see how far you have come in your life. Sometimes it takes reflecting on everything that has led you to this moment to see how much fruit you really have been bearing. We've all been pruning ourselves these last two years. We have been figuring out what gives us life and what does not. We have been figuring out how we can still bear fruit in a world that wants us to cut down our trees and move on to the next thing. And maybe, just maybe, we will never see the fruit that we have grown. And maybe we will need those around us to help point out the fruit that's been growing. The fruit that has changed over time and become something that we never imagined it to be. And maybe that is what Jesus is telling us in this parable, is that sometimes we need to take a step back and look at our tree fully, prune where we need to, then let it grow and change where it does, and see that fruit can still grow even in the midst of change, and that sometimes we will never see that fruit that we have grown. For we need both the man of the vineyard and the gardener. The season of Lent let us find times when we can be the gardener more than the one that looks at his tree every day. Let us find times to tell those around us when we see something changing within them, to let them know when we see them bearing fruit. That should be our mission with those that are around us in this vineyard, to help them grow and prune and find the fruit that they have helped bear when they cannot see it, and make sure that they and we mature into the amazing, beloved children of God that we each are. Amen. <clears throat> and now, let us share our joys and concerns with our community. Craig. I'm back. <laughs> I can always count on you, Craig, for something, so thank you. Um, I was basically putting my coat on to come to church, and uh, one of the guys that worked with Kyle was letting me know that his father was being put in the hospital mm -hmm. for a congestive heart failure. And uh, for the old school people around here, it was 20 years ago today that we lost Peter Claw. Mm -hmm.
You said Peter Clark? Peter Clark. He was such a musician, organist. He was, he was very talented. Bruce. Um, continue first, please. My daughter in law, Sarah. She's got a lot of struggles with the surgery. A lot of things that's happening that the surgeons weren't expecting. So keep Sarah and Bobby and the kids in prayers. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Carolyn. Uh, my friend uh, Jeff is looking forward to having um, back surgery, but he got postponed to go and see his mother in Israel. So he's going to um, try and make that trip in April and then come back and immediately have back surgery. So oh, wow. he's in a position to, and he knows that it's, it's going to be a hard trip for him. His prayers that I didn't have to see her one last time. Anyone else? We yeah. celebrated a three year old birthday yesterday. How so wonderful! <laughs> lots of fun, lots of laughter, and uh, lots of cake and ice cream. <laughs> Well, she doesn't know I'm going to do this, but it's a joy to always have mom here with me. So thank you always for being so welcoming of her and always my family and friends that come. So. Anything else? Okay. Then let us go to God in prayer. God of the vineyard, help to shine down on all of these trees that are here. Help to grow our fruit, to make it blossom, and drop just when it needs to. Help us to be that equal and opposite reaction from the love that we receive from you every day. Help us to care for each other, to be there for each other, to provide shade when a tree looks a little dry. God, and remind us that we are not alone in this vineyard, that we have faithful gardeners all around us. Ones that will help to care for us when the journey is just a little harder. God, you know that there are prayers on our hearts that were not said. Prayers that only you know, for you know all that is on our hearts. Hear those prayers. Provide what is needed. And when our prayers don't seem like enough, Remind us of the prayer we can always turn to. The prayer that your son taught us to say. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And as always, we appreciate your continued support of the ministry of the church as we fulfill our mission to love God, love people, and serve the world. 
Your gift helps us to continue to be that hopeful presence in our community, as Chris said, to be that equal and opposite reaction to all that we have received. And as always, my offering up here is a symbol of all of our offerings back in the box. And now as you are able, will you please stand and join in singing our doxology.
okay. It's okay. We're, we're, st we're still figuring it all out. <laughs> This is a benediction from Jan Richardson, who we've been hearing a lot from this month. This is called Blessing the Seed. I should tell you at the outset, this blessing will require you to do some work. First, you must simply let this blessing fall from your hand, as if it were a small thing you could easily let slip through your fingers. If it were not most precious to you, as if your life did not depend on it. Next, you must trust that this blessing knows where it is going, that it understands the ways of the dark, that it is wise to seasons and to times. Then, and I know this blessing has already asked much of you, it is to be hoped that you will rest and learn that something is at work when all seems still, seems dormant, seems dead. I promise you this blessing has not abandoned you. I promise you this blessing is on its way back to you. I promise you when you are least expecting it, when you have given up your last hope, this blessing will rise green and whole and new. May it be so. Amen.